Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is your latest Ask the News and Transfer News as well. Amadou Onana has agreed to join Arsenal in January. He wants to stay in the Premier League and he sees Arsenal as the perfect deal for him. So we have at least an agreement on the player side. Now, Arsenal are working with Everton to get a deal done. With Arsenal being confident they can close this deal before the 20th of January when we play Crystal Palace um, in the Premier League. So it's a deal that's advancing a little bit quicker. Arsenal still have to deal with finances and that is going to be the problem structuring the deal but at the moment the player side is in agreement with us they want to join us they want to play for us and Amadou Nana is happy to stay in the Premier League joining Arsenal in January now we're going to be diving into the structure of this deal we'll be talking about um, the latest about um, this deal and probably we'll also talk about what Amadou Onana gives Arsenal and Mikel Arteta this January transfer window. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. You won't miss anything on this story if you do subscribe and you keep yourself locked to Kosi uh, Arsenal. I'm going to be giving you every single update around this story. Now, Sajja Tavolari says that Arsenal have an agreement on the player side uh, to join them. They always thought, and Mikelata always thought that Amadou Onana um, is a big Arsenal fan. Now, of course, um, everyone who wants to play for Arsenal, everyone who Arsenal wants uh, is a big fan, Arsenal fan until we sign them or until when we don't sign them. Uh, Moises Caicedo last January was a big Arsenal fan and suddenly he was a Chelsea fan when he signed for them. But I think the, the, the big point here is when you talk to the player, and you talk to the players camp and you get that argument uh, the player agrees to join you the agents uh, advise him to actually join you that is a very big boost in this story because uh, you know everton are not willing to stand in our way they are not willing to stop us um in our pursuit of amadu onana and it's, it's surprising it's very surprising to me if i was um sean dyke i, I wouldn't sell him I would think about keeping my best players first. I'll think about, you know, keeping my um, quality first, especially as they try to stay in the Premier League. But Everton, according to what we are hearing, they will not stand in the way of Amadou Onana. Their financial situation does not permit that. So um, the player wants to play for Arsenal. His priority is to stay in the Premier League. When he came to Everton in the summer of 2022, um, I actually said... This, will, uh, this, this guy will go on to play for Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal, um, or even Manchester City. I looked at his game and I was amazed. Energetic, very, very industrious in midfield. I think he's a midfield dynamite. Um, and maybe Mikelata is trying to look for that tradition number eight. And we could be getting it in Amadou Onana. So now, Arsenal, that, uh, now that we have that argument and that consensus on the player side, we need to keep on pushing with Everton. They are not going to be difficult, but the structure of the deal is really going to be very difficult. Listen, if, if we were going with Ever to Everton with around 30 to 40 million, uh, you know, up front and maybe 10 million in add-ons, that would have been an easier deal. But because Arsenal have FFP issues and Arsenal have, um, you know, financial problems, we might actually be looking to do a different kind of deal. And this is the structure Arsenal want to propose to Everton. They want to, uh, they, they want to go a loan deal. They want to do a loan deal with an obligation to buy in the summer. Now, that is not a bad, uh, th that is not a bad suggestion to Everton. Uh, but it only works under two conditions number one if arsenal don't have competition on this deal so if you don't have any competition um you're there you, you're the only team that is going to try to sign amadu onana then that could actually work because everton will be looking around and they're like no one wants him and we can already uh, register this income uh, as part of this financial year that is what everton wants. they want to register income as part of this financial year which ends in june uh, on June 30th, um, 2024, right? So that's what they want. So if Arsenal are promising around 40 to 50 million uh, before the end of June this year, then that will actually work. So Everton will be willing to listen. The other way Everton will be willing to listen to this deal is if Arsenal are, are saying, we are going to give you, um, you know, uh, we want a loan deal. We are going to pay all the wages of the player at the moment, um, and then come the end of, uh, you know, come the end of the season, we are going to pay your your, your money in time, um, you know, as well. So if if, if that's the way uh, we are going to structure the deal, maybe Everton might be able to listen. But at least we have a very good, uh, you know, advancement today. The player is keen on joining Arsenal, loves Arsenal, and love to stay in the Premier League. And uh, the Arsenal move is one he's actually looking forward to. Now, what does Amadou Onana 
bring to Arsenal and why is he such a quality signing and why would he be a very good player if he joins Arsenal? I think the first thing is options and that's what I've, I've written right there in my number one, midfield options. So, uh, Mikel Arteta has said he's short, he's looking to build his squad and keep on building his squad and keep on building his squad time and time again. And for me as, um, as an Arsenal fan, I, I don't disagree with that. Any manager has got to get to get the tools uh, to allow him to do the job. Now, I'm not saying Mikel Arteta should be not winning any silverware uh, this campaign, should be knocked out of the FA Cup, Carabao Cup, like, he has, like he's done, and he's far away from the uh, Champions League and he's far away from the Premier League like he's actually doing. I don't think that is justifiable. But I still think Mikel, as manager, needs option in midfield. El Nen is not an option for me. Smith at the moment is no longer an option in the eyes of the manager. And therefore, the likes of uh, Gugino, um, the likes of uh, Thomas Pate, players that are not reliable and players that the manager uh, is not relying on uh, you know, every single ba da daily basis uh, or every week basis, um, you've got to move them on. So if you lose around four or five players in that midfield, Arsenal might need around two reinforcements to actually cover up the quality and cover up the legs as well. So Ahmad Onana, just gives you options right uh, we were talking to we were talking with glenn last night on the uh, on, on the glenn kitely everything channel so you can check it out uh one of those videos that we did and he was saying that um with amadu onana you have uh, you know you have an option of playing him alongside Pate and using Kai Havertz as a striker, you have a lot, uh, 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 an option of playing him with Declan Rice in that double pivot. He, he gives you a lot of options, gives you um, a lot of, uh, you know, a variety, and that's what Mikel Arteta needs at the moment, right? When you look at this Arsenal team, it is stuck, right? Really, really stuck. Declan Rice is like a, you know, a one-man show. If he doesn't shine, Arsenal don't shine. If he doesn't do something good, Arsenal don't do something good. You'd need options in their, their different games where Declan Rice is not the guy for you. There are different uh, days where uh, Pate is not the guy for you. And maybe Amadou Onana could be the player. Now, he's young. You can transform him into a number 10. You can transform him into uh, a good box-to-box. -box. You can transform him into um, a number 6, a Yaya Toure. Like, he's so good for me. That is the level um, at which I can actually see him ball carrier um he can turn into ball a decent ball winner if you can actually work with him uh, on a couple of aspects of his game as well now does he come in to replace thomas Partey? before we get into uh, the other points on my list i don't think he comes in to replace thomas Partey. i think Partey is a very different animal and very different player in terms of quality but also in terms of um you know profile to amadou onana now onana is not an elite ball winner Pate is an elite ball winner. Pate is not an elite dribbler and ball carrier. Um, Amadou Onana is a, an elite ball carrier and um, you know and and uh, you know dribbler. Pate is an elite ball passer. I think you know switching play and um, you know very good in transitioning. Pate is your guy. I don't think Amadou Onana is your guy in that way. But he is a midfield engine and he is a midfield dynamite. So if you're looking for a dynamite, you're looking for an engine. Amadou Onana is your guy. Trust me, guys. He is absolutely right up there with the best of the best. Now, the second option Mikelata will be getting is a number eight that is natural. And with natural number eights, um, they're kind of dying out in the game. And, and, and you look at um, the situations right now, the, the formations right now. Uh, we're playing the 4-3-3. The, the three, you're playing the 3-5-2. You're playing the 4-5-1. The, 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 the natural number eight you know box to box um you know impacting both boxes all that kind of stuff is actually dying out but maybe as it as those you know formations are dying out and teams are no longer prepared to um to play a six an eight and a ten maybe it could be an avenue for one of the managers one of the top thinkers in the managers maybe Mikel Arteta, maybe Pep Guardiola, maybe um, Jurgen Klopp, to reinvent the wheel and bring back the 4-2-3-1. So if we played Amadou Onana as a natural eight, Declan Rice will have to be in a six, but this kind of different kind of six, like a six that has the ability to bombard forward, carry the ball, um, and, you know, like, irrigate. That is um, Declan Rice. Ahmad Onana would then be your traditional number eight. You know what they do. They impact both boxes. They shoot outside the penalty area. They carry the ball. They run a lot. They push around. Um, and all that kind of dynamism in the midfield. And 
that also means you could have Kai Harvest and um, Martin Odegaard fighting for one position on the pitch, and that could be the number 10. Um, of course, Kai Harvest has an added, ad added advantage to Odegaard because with Odegaard, you can play him as a number 8, uh, but he's a pressing monster. So you want him in that number 10. With Kai Harvest, you can play him in the 10. He presses very well. And then you can also play him as a number 9. Again, he presses very well from the front. So imagine having Kai and Odegaard up top uh, before we sign a striker probably. And then have Saka and, um, and Martinelli. That would allow us to have a couple of players dedicated to the attack and maybe would score more goals. So the number 8 role um, might come in if Mikel Arteta is thinking, how about we change things up? How about we go um, in a different direction? And I would love to see that. My number three, uh, what Amadou Onana brings to Arsenal is midfield control, but more midfield control. So the, the objective of Mikel Arteta this season, like we have seen, control the midfield, control the game. Don't allow the opponent a lot of time on the ball. Don't allow the opponent a lot of spaces, a lot of um, you know chance to get closer to you, to get closer to the ball. Just have this possession, 60%, 70%, 80%. And it's actually worked out very well because the number of goals Arsenal conceding uh, has um, has gone down in, in certain games. We have the ability to, to keep more clean sheets. We have the ability to win games by smaller margins. Um, and that has been the case until six games before, right? But what I think Mikel Arteta will gain with Amadou Onana, imagine having a towering, like a tower in the midfield of Declan Rice. And then uh, Amadou Onan as well is another tower. So it means that you can fight and you can um, physically compete and, you know, keep the ball, uh, you know, in midfield against any midfield. Because for, for Liverpool, suppose like Macaulay Stubb, Graben Batch and Wataru Endo, if I have Declan Rice, Amadou Onana um, and Kai Havis and Odegaard, we can win we can win the midfield battle of course with Alexander Zinchenko inviting into midfield you can easily win that midfield battle with Manchester City Kevin De Bruyne Rodri uh, and um, maybe Julian Alvarez dropping a little bit deep and then Kai Walker inviting as well or John Stones and then you have um uh, you know maybe you know Kovacic again you can you can go to toe to toe with them right so Amad Onan I think Mikel is looking at it in this way I want more midfield control right yeah you know in the games that we have lost there, was, there were moments where the team we played had more of control in midfield uh, than us. That is what Mikel Arteta doesn't want. That is what Mikel Arteta is against. If we have midfield control, let it be total midfield control. And to some, to, to some extent, I agree with him. To some extent, I'm thinking this is, um, you know, this is your strategy, so you better be perfect at it. If our strategy is to be good at manning the ball in midfield, then we better be good at it. So more physicality is the other thing Arsenal will get by signing Amadou Onana. And um, I've talked about it. He's physical, tall, strong, dribbling, and um, press resistant as well. And maybe Mikel Arteta is focusing on the Champions League. Because Amadou Onana, Declan Rice, and Martin Odegaard, plus Kai Havertz and Alexander Zinchenko in batting into midfield, that would be decent in the Champions League. I don't, I don't want to lie. Because I'm looking at the midfields um, in the Champions League, right? So let's look at um, Madrid. Chouameni, Kamavinga, Jude Bellingham, Fede Valverde. Um, that is decent. Like, that is real quality. And then you have Cruz and Modric. That is Real Madrid. That's quality. You have physicality in, uh, in, in Kamavinga and Chouameni. Probably not really in Kamavinga, but in Chouameni, there's a lot of uh, physicality. And there's a lot of quality uh, in Jude Bellingham and Luka Modric. And then there is this control, just control, in um, Tony Cruz and, um, you know, and, and, and Valverde and, um, and, 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 and Chouameni as well. So there's a lot of quality. So probably Ahmad Onana would come in just to make sure that we can compete with the likes of Madrid. So Bayern... At the moment, um, they have Kimmich, they have Goreska, um, Sane, at times, at times playing in the 10. Um, I, like, I don't know why he plays in the 10. I think he's a better player or, you know, out wide. Uh, but, you know, Libre Sane at times playing in the, in the 10. And then at times, Jumal Musiala as well. They have a lot of quality going forward in Musiala and Sane. 
They have a lot of um, calm in midfield in Goreska and Kimmich. And the physicality, maybe, that's where you would question, right? We might beat them in physicality. FC Barcelona, Frankie de Jong, um, Ilke Gundogan, Pedri, and Gav. I think Gav is out for, for, for the whole of the season, actually. Uh, so those three, I think phys physically we would beat them. Physically we would beat them. The only midfield I would be concerned about, if I had, if, if we had Onana and, uh, and Pate and um, Rice back, right? The only midfield I'll be concerned about is Inter Milan's midfield and Real Madrid's midfield. Because with Inter Milan, Marcelo Brozovic, Hakan Kolonogro, uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan, uh, then, then my, my favorite midfielder in the world, Barella, that's quality there, like, right? That, that's quality. And we've not talked about Fratesi as well, right? We've not talked about Fr Fratesi, who's another gem at the moment, flying, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, uh, you know, each and everywhere. Uh, so maybe that's what he's looking at. Maybe he's looking at the Champions League. Maybe he's going. Um, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to try to win the Champions League, and we see how that actually, uh, you know, turns up to be. Uh, and finally, an, a rotation option for Declan Rice. Mikel will get a rotation option for Declan Rice, um, and that is something that we've been screaming out for. Can you get someone else so that you don't overly rely? on Declan Rice. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. We'll be doing a lot of Onana videos today just to make sure that we exhaust the, um, the topic and make you informed uh, with whatever happens. So stay tuned. It's a big day, big day in office.